Okay, this is uh, English 101, uh, week 12, part four. Um, we are in paragraph four, which is the last paragraph on page one by Eric, we're going to Eric Fromm's disobedience as a psychological and moral problem. So he, and when I ask you about your papers, I say, make your points and give me reasons and examples. And, and I also say, say, you know, what would someone who disagreed with you say? And what would you say to them? So that's what he's done in this paper, right? He starts off by saying what other people say. Kings, priests, feudal lords, bosses, and parents say it's good to obey and bad to disobey. What's his, what is his opinion about that? He says he thinks that's wrong, and actually disobedience is the beginning of human history. And then for examples, he says, for example, in the Bible, and, and then next he's about to say, in ancient Greek mythology. So let's talk about the next bit of mythology. So he says, and I'm in paragraph four now, bottom of page one, just as the Hebrew myth... Um, just as the Hebrew myth of Adam and Eve, so the Greek myth of Prometheus sees all human civilization based on an act of disobedience. So the story of Prometheus in ancient Greek mythology is Prometheus um, stole fire from Zeus, stole fire from the gods, and gave it to human beings. Um, and that he was punished for this. He was chained to a rock and sort of birds come down and eat his liver every day and he's forever punished for this terrible sin of disobeying King Zeus because Zeus is like the king of the gods in ancient Greek mythology. Um, uh, yeah, by the way, if you know the movie of Prometheus, they're flying into space on a ship called Prometheus. What are they looking for? God. Uh, and what do they find when they find God? He kicks the shit out of them. That's exactly what happens when <laughs> into, uh, uh, that's exactly what happens to Prometheus, right? Is he, he goes up there. Prometheus goes into the heavens, steals something from the gods, and gets punished for it. And the exact same thing happens in the movie Prometheus. That they, in the movie, Why is the movie Prometheus called Prometheus? Well, it's the name of the ship. But why is the ship called that? Well, the ship is called that because the guys that made the movie wanted to connect it to the mythology. I don't know if you know that movie. Um, okay, so... He, he, he says, just the Hebrew myth of Adam and Eve, so the Greek myth of Prometheus sees all human civilization based on an act of disobedience. Prometheus, in stealing the fire from the gods, lays the foundation for the evolution of man. Because when he gave, he stole, Prometheus steals fire from the gods, gives it to human beings, but that's one, that's like the beginning of human history, having fire, being able to make things and build things and cook food and heat houses in the wintertime, right? Um... All right, there would be no human history were it not for Prometheus's crime. The gods call it a crime, but I think if you're a human being, you might be like Prometheus. That's not a crime. That was awesome. Thanks for giving us fire. We fucking needed that. Um, he, like Adam and Eve, is punished for disobedience, right? But he does not repent and ask for forgiveness. He doesn't say, I'm sorry I stole the fire. On the contrary, he proudly says, I would rather be chained to this rock than be an obedient servant of the gods. So he disobeys, he gets punished, but he's still happy he disobeyed. Because he thinks it's better to have your ass kicked than to just take orders. Because taking orders is for robots. Okay, this is going pretty smoothly. All right, we are now on to page two. Paragraph five of the Eric from. Um, man has continued to evolve by acts of disobedience. Not only was his spiritual development possible, only because there were men who dared to say no to the powers that be in the name of their conscience or their faith, but also his intellectual development was dependent on the capacity for being disobedient. Disobedient to authorities who tried to muzzle, meaning shut up, their new thoughts and to the authority of long-established opinions which declared a change to be nonsense. Okay, so that paragraph is like only two sentences. That doesn't really seem like enough sentences for a paragraph, but we'll let it go for it. It's been edited maybe, I don't know. Um, so paragraph five, he just says that disobedience allows human beings to evolve. Dis disobeying authority is a good thing because if all you ever do is obey, you're just doing the same thing that people are making you do stuff over and over again. How's, how are you ever going to have a change in society? He says, not only was his spiritual development possible only because they were men who dared to say no to the powers that be in the name of their conscience or their faith. So somebody says, you have to worship these gods. And people were like, no, I'm doing, I disobey because of my faith. I'm going to do something else and worship these other gods. Or people said, you have to worship God. And a bunch of scientists said, no, we're not gonna. There's no such thing as God. We're scientists, right? That human beings evolve when they disobey and say no. Because if we, if the church was in charge of everything forever, there would not be any scientists because they would be like, you're not allowed to study that because it contradicts the Bible. 
Um, this was, I'm sure you guys know, this is the thing that happened in human history where, for example, for a long time, they thought the earth was the center of the solar system. And Copernicus was like, no, the sun is the center of the solar system. And the church got really mad at him because they were like, you're not allowed to say that, that, you know, that's not our, that's not the church's position and the church isn't wrong. You better obey us. And he was like, no, I'm not going to obey you. Um, so it doesn't, you can think of lots of examples on your own. This is a good thing you do in the discussion board is to talk about examples where disobedience helped evolve human history might be something worth thinking about. Um, in fact, one thing you might do in the discussion boards is talk about a time when you disobeyed and it went really well, or a time when you obeyed and it went badly. Um, and that'll help you to generate examples that you could use when you get to paper four. Because remember, you're, if you say it on the discussion board, you're allowed to say it again in the paper. Because not stealing, you came up with it. Um, so he says, um, uh, okay, not only was, I'm, I'm still in paragraph five, not only was his spiritual development possible, only because there were men who dared to say no to the powers that be in the name of their conscience or their faith, but also his intellectual development was dependent on the capacity for being disobedient. Disobedient to authorities who tried to muzzle new thoughts into the authority of long-established opinions which declared change to be nonsense. A lot of people in power say nothing should ever change. Why would they say that? Well, because they're in power. So if you're living, if you're like really, if you're in charge of everybody, then of course you're going to say nothing should ever change because that keeps you in power. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you know, you should obey me. Like, and here's another one too. People go, well, ob obedience is good. Where'd you hear that from? Was it from your mom? Was it because she wanted you to obey? Like, of course the people in charge of you are going to tell you to obey because it's good for them if you do what you're told. Your priest is happy when you do what the priest wants. Your mom is happy when you do what she wants. Your boss is happy when he does what you think. Oh, you know, I'm, oh, you should always obey, never disobey. And that's what a lot of people will say because it's useful for them because they're in charge. But if you're not in charge, disobedience actually might be a good idea because it means things could change. They could change so maybe you have a little more power. Because if you keep listening to them, they're not going to just give you more power. Why would they do that? Um, they like their power. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I think we're good. I think I'm moving on to paragraph six a little bit. All right, cool. Um, and it, it, it's, 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 it's always worth thinking about where do these ideas come from, right? So I, of, of, of course the people in charge, I already said this. I'm, why am I repeating myself? Let's just move on to paragraph six. If the capacity for disobedience constituted the beginning of human history. So now he's changing subjects. Remember, he said two things in that first paragraph. He said disobedience was the beginning of human history. For example, in the Bible and in ancient Greek mythology. The other thing he said in that first paragraph, though, was he said that too much... See, he said, you know what? A lot of people think obedience is... People in charge, people that give orders, lords, bosses, priests, they say obedience is good and disobedience is bad. And Eric Fromm says, I think they're wrong. I actually think disobedience is good. It's the beginning of human civilization and the only way things can evolve or change. The other thing he, and then he gave examples of that with the Hebrew Bible and ancient Greek mythology. But he said something else in that first paragraph. He said, he said, I think too much obedience is actually going to get everybody killed. Um, so now the next thing he's going to do in his paper is, because the first thing was a strange thing to say, and so he got some examples to back it up. The second thing is also a strange thing to say. Why would people obeying orders kill everybody? Um, and so he needs some examples. He's going to give an example uh, to kind of go over that. So paragraph six, he's changing subjects. He's no longer talking about the beginning of human history uh, and that idea that disobedience is important to human history. He's now talking about obedience and how it's... He started off by saying, uh, people say obedience is good and disobedience is bad. I think the opposite. And so the first part was him saying, why is disobedience good? Well, let's take a look at the Bible and Prometheus. Why is obedience bad? And this is the part he's on now with paragraph six. He says, if the capacity for disobedience constituted the beginning of human history, obedience might very well, as I have said, cause the end of human history. I am not speaking symbolically or poetically. He really means it. He really thinks if people keep obeying orders, we are all going to die. Why? Let's find out in the next video.